Welcome to this week's Ask GMBN. It's just me this week, but I am an expert in mountain biking, okay? So I think I can answer literally any question you send in. The way you can do that is putting hashtag Ask GMBN in the comments section down below. You can use social media as well if you wish. Um, we're always looking for really great questions to answer in these videos. So please do that. Um, I'm gonna start answering the questions you've put in there already though for this week's film. Um, and we're starting with David Orotz's uh, question. He said, I've got a 26 inch hardtail uh, cross country bike and I'm thinking about upgrading to 27.5 wheels, um, which isn't a bad idea. Uh, I tried my friend's wheels on the bike. There's a lot of room between the tire and the frame, but on the front, there's only one to two millimeters uh, between the tire and the fork crown. Um, looks, a little unlu looks a little unusual, but doesn't look bad. Um, if I ride mostly in dry conditions, could there be any problem? What do you think? Well, one to two millimeters is not much uh, distance actually. So uh, things to think about. Uh, in cornering, obviously the tire does roll and bend. Um, and even though it's mostly happening at the point of contact on the ground, um, it's gonna mean that there is movement up the top as well as the tire comes back into shape before it comes around again. So you're gonna get rubbing in the corner, I'm sure, um, which won't be cool. You'll be getting an awful lot of noise, obviously wearing into the side of the tire and the fork itself. Um, if you do do ever ride in mud, there's not gonna be much clearance at all. So you could get the wheel locking up. I've had that happen when I was riding motorcycles, the front just locks up um, and it starts skating about and it's horrible. Um, what about upgrading to a 27.5 fork as well? could do that and then you've got the best of both worlds um, and of course one thing to really be aware of is that when you put slightly bigger wheels in the bottom bracket is gonna rise so not necessarily a terrible thing um, but worth being aware of so I hope that's helpful um, but yeah look forward to hearing what you do do uh, Alexander Domingos is next um, can I do downhill with an enduro bike right first off right Here's my view on this. You can, I'm sorry, computer. Sorry, the computer would like to chip in. No, I didn't think you were the expert, I am. Right, what I wanna say about this is you can do downhill on any bike, even if all you've got is a carbon fiber road racing bicycle. You could do downhill on that if you wanted, I've tried. Um, and downhill's just about like having fun, but an enduro bike is gonna do downhill really, really well, essentially. That's what enduro racing is, you know? They've got to make it to the tops of start points to do some downhill racing. And if you watch any Enduro World Series event now, you'll see that those top guys are racing those enduro bikes as fast as downhillers go. You know, those bikes are so capable. So yes, 100%, you can definitely do downhill on an enduro bike. But if you've got a hardtail, if you've got a fully rigid bike, um, if you've got a fat bike, if you've got an e-bike, no matter what you've got, you can do downhill uh, attitude riding. Um, taking on a downhill race on a bike like that may be a different subject, but. Yeah, of course you can do downhill on any bike. Uh, next up, Whizbang80. That's a good name, I like that. Um, Hi guys, I'm about to do the cycle to work scheme and I have a thousand pounds, so about $1,200, 1100 euros um, to spend on, on a new hardtail. Um, I'd like to support my local bike shop and they're primarily stock Cube and Kona. Um, I'd value your opinion on the Cube Acid Eagle and the Kona Kahuna. Um, or do I say screw shopping local and get the Nuke Proof Scout Sport online? That's a good bike. Um, right, okay, I don't know much about the Cube Acid or the Kona Kahuna, but Claudio, uh, the man who does all the research here, who's uh, super smart and knows his mountain biking, right? I got him to have a look, right? This is what he said. Uh, the cube has eagle. It's the only good thing going for it, okay? So I think the cube's out, okay? I guess, right? This is Claudio, just Claudio's thoughts. Um, Kona has a better frame and all other components than the cube. Um, so the Kona, looking pretty good. Um, Nuke Proof Scout is more aggressive. 140 mil um, versus 100 mil up front on the other bikes. Um, we're probably bound to say the Nuke Proof uh, is 
better, okay? So there's a bit of bias there because we've ridden that bike a lot. Um, the frame's built enough for Blake's antics, so we've seen that. If you want more aggressive bike, it's slacker and more able to trick stuff. Um, so definitely go for the Scout if that's your thing. So the Kona is more XC riding, basically. Um, the Nuke Proof is definitely something we've had a go with. Um, so I tell you what, if you're thinking about getting a hardtail though, let's throw to our how to uh, how hard can you push a hardtail video and see what the guys got up to with one. Definitely gonna test out the hardtail. I'm gonna do this filthy ape drop. It's not a drop, it's a big rock roll. And I, yeah, I'm quite nervous. I'm nervous on a full sus, but I'm now doing it on a hardtail. I've got my tire pressure's running so low. It's because it's so rough and bumpy up. <sighs> nah, I got it. <laughs> filthy ape, rock drop, hardtail. Oh wow, look, oh my gosh, it's so much more scary. Oh. <laughs> nice, not finished yet. Look at this, horrible bit of, oh my gosh, this is horrible. Right, next question from Matei Kodrin, and he's saying, I'm shopping for a new front tire and I'm wondering why do Schwalbe tires have blue or red lines on the tread? And it's not even in the center, he says in capitals. Obviously annoying, uh, Matej. Um, right, it's called the Addix. Um, and basically, there's a, a system that Schwalbe are using to identify the different compounds of their tires. So there is a speed red, speed grip orange, soft blue, and ultra soft purple. So basically, uh, you can work out how uh, that compound is gonna affect your riding. And I'm probably suspecting that it's a way for Schwalbe to help stock their tires in their own warehouse. So they know what the hell black rubber tire they're looking at. Um, why it's not in the middle? I don't know, being stylish. You know, they're sort of thinking a bit like 70s go faster stripes. Don't know. Don't know why that is. Your answer is as good as mine. Sam Chili is next. And he says, hey everybody, uh, I'm a freshman in high school uh, and racing NICA. I'm saving up for an XC bike. Uh, I'm considering getting fully rigid bike because it reduces the cost. What do you think? That, Nick, that doesn't sound like a good idea, does it? Fully rigid? You could get away with it. You could get away with it, but I would get some front suspension if I was you because I think you're going to be at a disadvantage um, for the, you know, for what you're going to gain and what you could buy in bike. I think you're going to have a disadvantage in the racing itself. You could bike further down the line, get some forks in a bit. Yeah, yeah, it could be a later purchase. That's true. So I'd ride the bikes. I'd ride the bikes. I would say go ride the bikes rather than make the decision. R make the decision on what feels right, okay? Because you're going to be racing this bike. Um, uh, if you, some people really enjoy the feeling of a fully rigid bike. Um, I used to ride fully rigid uh, and I loved it because I liked all the feedback and I liked making me take everything on. So it might be for you, but the way to decide is by riding the bike, not, not necessarily by just going on cost. Uh, but like Nick said, he's a rider himself, man behind the camera, he knows what he's talking about. Maybe you go fully rigid and you get a suspension fork further down the line. Good option. I don't know if I answered your question there, it just caused you more of a problem. I'm not sure, but I'm with you. I'm with you in it. You know, we're involved now. So, you know, I hope that helped. Ed Sullivan, it's not Ed Sullivan, it's Evan Sullivan, uh, says, hi guys, I'm currently riding a Norco range, um, which is 170 mil travel. However, I keep considering upgrading to Fox 40s. Whoa, <laughs> that's a big upgrade. Now my bike comes originally with 170 mil RockShox Lyric uh, and has a tapered steerer. Please could you explain the advantages and disadvantages? Um, also, how would I go about fitting a straight steerer to a tapered steerer? <laughs> no, I'm really dubious about this upgrade to Fox 40s. Things to consider, right? Because you're talking about going up to a triple camp fork there, serious, big hitting fork. Um, it's going to reduce the steering ability because basically you basically are you're only going to be able to turn it as far as the, until the fork hits the frame, which you don't have on a single crown fork. Um, reduces the climbing a lot because you're going to get much steeper head angle. So suddenly the bike is going to be really sat up at the front, uh, and it's, you're really going to notice the difference. Um, so it's changing the geometry too much. So it's definitely something to think about. Uh, what else? Uh, more check, weight. yeah, more weight, and check to see if your frame could even take having a triple clamp fork. I mean, uh, 
not all frames are designed for that. That is something uh, frame designers would consider when they're when they're considering a bike that would have a triple clamp fork on it. Um, tapered to straight. Um, New head you're going to need new headset cup basically so the cup the cups are what determine how that tapered steer is going to go through so if you've got straight through at the moment you would probably need to change the bottom cup so it could take a tapered fork uh, but I'm just not sure about you going to Fox 40s. It's your decision. If you do do it, please take a picture and send it into the GMB and Uploader. I would love to see it. Um, I laugh in sympathy with you because I have done it. I did it on my trials bike. <laughs> Literally a bike um, I've got in the shed here. Uh, I put a, a triple clamp fork on it just to see what would happen. And it was, a, it, I was going off the biggest drops I've ever gone off but it looked horrendous. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, William Hester is next. Uh, and basically he's saying um, he's, he's loved learning riding. He's uh, been along with us on GMBN and he's he's got into riding. He got seriously overbiked by getting a Transition Scout Carbon on his first bike, very nice bike. His wife's now got into the sport, right? And he's considering, <laughs> I know what you're doing here, uh, William. He's considering giving the, the uh, you know, that old transition scout carbon to his wife, that old thing, uh, and considering some new bikes. <laughs> Someone's got the bug and too much cash in his pocket. Uh, and he's saying basically, Nuke Proof Mega 275 Factory, Da Vinci Troy Carbon, um, uh, some big bikes with XO1 Eagle, uh, Yeti Cycles SB6, Turk uh, with Eagle. Uh, they're all very different bikes, um, but with so many choices, after watching your videos on YouTube, I figure all, um, you'd be a good resource to ask. I'm 5'11", uh, 170 pounds, um, by the way. Uh, was thinking of a medium to large. Uh, would that be appropriate? So basically, out of all those bikes, what would you choose? Now, I, I don't know, I don't, I'm, I'm reluctant to, re uh, to recommend bikes I haven't ridden. Um, I do know, I do know that the Nuke Proof Mega is something Neil has ridden a lot um, and absolutely loves. So I'm, I'm biased again to say that that's a bike we've used. Um, the other bikes are really are really nice bikes, <laughs> and I I doubt you're going to get any of those bikes and not have a really great time. Uh, I'm with you on passing the old hand me down Scout, a Scout Carbon over to the wife, um, or alternatively you could let her choose a really good bike for her and her size. Um, just an idea. Uh, but yeah, let's say let's say. The Nuke Proof Mega is the one we would know most about. And, and to show you uh, just how much Neil enjoyed it, here's his new bike day video uh, where he got his first go on that bike. So that's it, it's my brand new Nuke Proof Mega. 275 Carbon RS Samuel Blueberry Colours. I absolutely love it. It is mega, as you'd imagine. Good shake down, maybe go a little bit softer on the fork. Give it a bolt check. Check the spokes, jobs are good in. Next question. They've been good questions this week. I'm enjoying it a lot. Next one is from Stilo Stig and he says, I have a Scott Genius MC50, as mentioned in a previous comment. Um, it is old and being old has toe cages. Wow. Um, should I take them off? Do they stop slipping pedals? What are the pros and cons? Thanks. Also, my name is Liam to clear any confusion. So it's Liam, not Stilo Stig. Um, wow. Uh, toe cages are, are pretty old and uh, I don't think they're a great idea, really. Um, they're sort of one of those things that your feet can, rather than clip out, like when you've got clip shoes, um, your feet can get caught in them. So I sort of think they're kind of dangerous. I think they've gone out of fashion for a reason um, in terms of mountain biking. Uh, I'd go with something like a, a really nice grippy flat pedal like Crank Brothers Stamp slot, what we use. I haven't got one in the shed to show you, but they're a great pedal and you can get like a budget version of them. Uh, they're, they'll make a big difference to your riding. Um, the, the platform probably Thinking about having your clip shoe, your what do we call it? Cage shoe, I guess. Yeah. Um, 
the stamp is going to be a much bigger platform as well. Uh, you're really going to notice how grippy that pedal is. So that's something I go with. Um, you don't, you just have much more grip and much more enjoyment on the bike. You're much less likely to have an accident because of your pedals. So that's what I do. I change them, go for a nice flat pedal, uh, and start enjoying uh, the sort of more modern. Uh, technology that's gone into all that stuff because a lot of thought has gone into pedals these days. Sounds like such a simple part of the bike, but it's not. Uh, definitely worth thinking about. Oh no, my bike just crashed. Hang on, let me just sort that out. He was obviously trying to do something very difficult. Uh, there we go. It's the ghost of little Dan Lloyd riding that bike, by the way. Next up, Cripple Crew is getting involved. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm in that gang. Um, next up, when it comes to choosing your shoes for riding, what do you think is more important, pedal grip or walking grip? Um, I own a pair of 510 free riders, um, use them shoes, uh, amazing, and I'm happy with them when I ride. The grip is enormous, it really is. Uh, but when I have to climb some mountain with my bike, I often slip. Um, are Northwave shoes better? Um, or maybe the ones from Vibe with Vibrant Souls, uh, or something similar. Okay, well this is tricky because, you know, you're choosing a free rider 510 for the riding. You know, it's it's probably not going to perform as well as kind of like a hiking shoe when you're walking. Um, but on the pedal, the grip is amazing, definitely. Um, I would suggest taking a look at. There's some there's some different shoes in 510's range that are more about uh, walking and riding. Um, so uh, something like the uh, 510 Ascent, that would work. Um, what else have we got down here? The 510 Guide Tenny. Uh, they're all ones that are sort of got more multi-use in mind. Um, I wouldn't. I, I, I would think the free rider's never gonna perform quite as well, but I'd always go with the the riding performance of a shoe than the walking performance of the shoe. Uh, I, I think if you're walking so much that um, that you're thinking like that, you need to improve your climbing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get some pins. Yeah, that's a great idea. Nick's coming with there. Yeah, some pins for the pedals. Uh, try and raise those pins, uh, and then maybe you're going to. Um... No, Nick, because then you're going to have more grip when you're pedaling. Yeah, but if you, you get a better walking shoe and then get better pins, and it gives you more grip. So get rid of the free rider shoe. Whoa, big, big gamble there. Big gamble there. And there's controversy in the shed right now on this question, Cripple Crew. What you've done there is you've really created a divide in the room. It's a bit like Brexit in here at the moment, but uh, I'm gonna go with, I haven't got an answer for this one. I, I can't answer it because I don't know the trail you're riding. That's the thing. Uh, and you might need to do quite a lot of hiking up. So maybe you do need to think about a hiking boot kind of thing that works for riding with longer pins on your pedal. Hard question to finish this week. Wow. Correct me if I'm wrong, this week is from Chong, and he's saying, how do I get more air higher um, uh, to clear this jump? I feel like I'm squashing it more than airing it. Right, let's take a look, see what you're doing. Oh, it's a nice jump. Step up in a skate park. Yeah, you are kind of squashing it, Chong, you really are. I'm gonna give that one more watch before I comment, because you know, it's not bad. It's... Yeah, okay. How can I demonstrate this? With the rat? No, I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with this little mini bike. Can you see that? At the moment, you're coming out of the takeoff and you're really going with, you're squashing the front end over the, top, the lip of the jump, like that. What you wanna do is really use that transition to create some height, let the front wheel follow the line of the transition more, then as it comes in, pitch the back end up and you're gonna get a lot more air and in that height, you're gonna create enough distance to then drop into the downside rather than move across the top. You're gonna to come up, peak and down. And while you're up there, why don't you throw in a cheeky little turn down and then into the landing. So just like lock it out. Actually, it's very difficult to do on a mountain bike, but it would look rad. Um, I hope that's helpful. Really kind of peak up there and drop into the downslope. It will look amazing. Please send us a video of when you're doing that um, and we'll show it on the Dirt Shed Show, perhaps. That could be cool. 
Thanks for watching this week's Ask GMBN. If you've got a question you'd like to ask, remember the comment section down below, hashtag Ask GMBN, and we will maybe try and answer it next week um, on our show. Uh, if you'd like to stay with GMBN, why don't you click just here where you can see some of Blake's vlogging from when he went out to South America recently. Very cool trip where lots happened to Andy Paci Andy's Pacifico. Neil knocked his leg clean off. It all happened, it was amazing. Click the globe to subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Give us a thumbs up, like, and we'll see you next time.